So for those of you who are not familiar with spiral dynamics, I figure I'll do a 5 out of 10, a 12-minute introduction to it. I know there's a lot of data out there. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with it, it's a nice refresher. What I've, uh, what I've put up there are the characteristics of the framework that are really most relevant to what is going on today. Okay? The uh, value systems framework or the spiral dynamics framework was initially envisioned as Tom said, by a developmental psychologist by the name of Claire Graves. Uh, uh, Claire Graves' associate, Dr. Don Beck, uh, and his uh, partner, uh, Christopher Cowan, took it to the masses. They uh, really took uh, Graves' research, packaged it in uh, ways people can understand it, not necessarily watered it down. It's still a very complex theory, but they made it more palpable and they brought it to the, uh, to the masses under the name of spiral dynamics. Uh, many of you here have met uh, Dr. Beck, have trained with him. Uh, Elza and I have worked with Don for the last uh, uh, decade and a half or so. And uh, here's the one sentence that describes the framework. The value systems framework is a hierarchically ordered, always open to change, set of values, morals, ethics, beliefs, and preferences that come together, I'm saying this as a, as a one sentence, I need to, need to put commas somewhere, that, that come together in the self-organizing principle to define an individual, a group, or a culture. Okay. So value systems emerge as a product of interactions between external conditions of existence, what we call life conditions in the model, and internal complex adaptive systems, the adaptive intelligence within us. It, this, is, it, this is essential for the functioning of the model. This is what makes it dynamic in the sense that if you really want to uh, know what your capacities for, uh, for, for contributing to society, you go out and figure out what the problems in the world are and it triggers the adaptive intelligence within you to go out and solve that problem. Uh, emergence alternates between individualistic, self-expressive I systems. Have we heard that in this election? I alone can solve it. And communal, self-sacrificial, we systems. Have we heard that? Stronger together. Okay. The two types of systems begin to integrate as emergence reaches the seventh level system. Okay. This is an important observation of the total framework. There are a total of eight levels of existence. Uh, Dr. Graves... Um, his research reflected that the first six levels, uh, well, there are two tiers in that system, okay? The first system contains the first six levels. And, and Dr. Graves called that the, uh, the values of subsistence. And the reason he called them that is in his research, he observed that it didn't matter what level you were at, how far you have developed up the spiral in that first six levels, is that uh, your values were resistant to integration with any other values in that framework. Meaning that if you were developed in the green system, that you have a tendency to look down at everyone else and laugh at them as you know, values of yesteryears that are outdated, outmoded, and you just don't have, or if you're an orange, you think that about everyone below you, but then you look up and you see green, and green, green is you know, a bunch of... Uh, you know, uh, people that you don't understand, so the, the values of that. So, so the first tier system uh, is the values of subsistence simply because uh, if you're anywhere in those system, the general idea is that you are resistant to integration. Uh, you begin to, inter those values begin to integrate. You begin to see the values and the merits of every system on the first spiral once you enter the second tier of values. So in the seventh level system, is when you begin to integrate, when you begin to get fuller picture of what life on this planet is all about. And you begin to see the value of the green system, you begin to see the value of the orange system. We will go over what these mean in a minute. But this is when you begin to see what the values that have emerged below you, below before you became a highly informed integral person. You would see, begin to see the values below you and the importance of what they have to contribute to life as we know it. Okay? Uh, each value system has a healthy and unhealthy expression. It can exist in an open, arrested, or closed states. 
In spiral dynamics, we really don't use the shadow language as much. Uh, we refer to it more as an arrested or an open state. Uh, it's important to really understand this as we begin to discuss the whole issue with, uh, with uh, you know, our migration to the right on the political spectrum. Uh, the uh, Donald Trump supporters are nothing more than people who at one point lived in an open system, blue to orange level of existence, uh, uh, patriotic values of their past. As, as we moved forward with our progressive values, we sort of left them behind. They slowly became a part of an arrested system. As we moved further away and ignored them, they, became, uh, they, became, they got frozen into, into a closed system that is now becoming toxic. And now it's beginning to default to the red, you know, excitement, egocentric kind of values that I don't care if, if you know, Donald Trump throws every law out the door. Uh, we need to be heard. This is a simple way to, 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 to look at what's happening through spiral dynamics. A person may not be equipped to move to a more complex system, even if life conditions demand it. He or she may stabilize at one or more system if life conditions are stable or downshift to previous system if uh, life conditions are under threat. Uh, people in Aleppo, Syria are not sitting around out outdoor cafes having philosophical discussions. They have defaulted all the way down to the very first level of existence, to what the caveman needs to do. Okay? They're hunkering in bomb shelters, drinking rainwater, and eating leaves to survive. Okay? So if life conditions warrant it, like it's what's happening now, we're really under a lot of stress because of this election, and we're downshifting from wherever we are. We're becoming very temperamental. We, we think that Donald Trump is not going to be elected, and we might be in for a huge shock if we overlook some of the same things that the British overlooked on why he's being elected. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Okay? Uh, a, person, a, culture, a person or a culture cannot skip a development stage. The ones who do run the risk of oversimplifying the importance of this stage or stages uh, to the overall health of the individual or the entity. Uh, a 21-year-old individual going to the Integral Institute in San Francisco cannot say, I was born in the integral values of the seventh level system. You simply have not had enough years on this planet to experience every possible system under you. You have to go through purple, experience what it's like to, to be a part of a tribe. You have to go through red, get your ass kicked in high school. You know, go to the blue system, go to college, develop some discipline, become a businessman, and then become the environmentalist. And then you can say, maybe I'm in those values. You cannot skip a stage. If you do, it is, this is an experiential uh, uh, framework. If you do, you tend to have a warped view. I shouldn't say warped. A, an incomplete view of reality. And, uh, you know, it might affect how you perceive others in life. Uh... People, groups, and cultures exhibit more than one value system, but will have a main center of gravity in one or two or more systems, placing all other systems at the service of their own center of gravity. This is a little complex to understand, but, you know, uh, many people uh, take spiral dynamics training, and they go home, and they think they learned the theory, and they turn to their spouse and say, I know why we're not getting along. You're green and I'm red, or vice versa. And, and they think that that's spiral dynamics. It is not. And don't ever fall into that kind of a uh, uh, surface use of the theory. Okay? Uh, our, we have centers of gravity that constantly change depending on where you are in your life conditions. If you leave your house, your composite of your value systems is going to change. At work, I am orange. Okay? Around my kids, I'm green or purple. Uh, when I'm around a community like this, I like to think that I'm integral. You know, I live in orange, green, yellow. But when I go home for Thanksgiving in two weeks, I just send all the way down to purple. I don't laugh at it. You need to spend time there in order for your spiral of values to be healthy. Okay? So don't think that you, you, you know, you're, oh, I am, I am definitely yellow. I don't, I don't mess around with first year. <laughs> uh, 
Once a person, a culture, transcends a lower value system, he, she, it must include it in their new value system profile. Those who do not will develop unhealthy views of the lower systems, causing interpersonal or cultural conflicts. If there is an important characteristic on that slide that pertains to what is going on in politics today, it is that. The progressive values have left the blue-collar working class behind. This is a transcend and include framework, not transcend and ignore. The primary problem that have caused the Trump supporters to be as determined or as vicious, whatever word you want to use, is because our progressive values have said, hey, your values are yesteryear. Life moves forward. And because we have no mechanisms to have that inclusionary you know, system that will make sure these people come along with us, they turn to an arrested and closed system and begin to downshift in their values. Okay? And those are the characteristics. There's, there's a thousand of these, but I, I sort of you know, spend a couple hours putting these together, try to uh, frame what we were talking about tonight. And here are the, uh, here are the eight levels of existence and a brief description of each. Uh, these are systems that uh, are uh, historic and contemporary. These are systems that are within us, within cultures. The first level is a survival sense. Uh, these are the values of a caveman. They're also the values of a newborn child, entirely mm -hmm. dependent on the parent. Okay, survival values in a historic sense. Uh, you live automatically, much like the animals out there. Your primary uh, uh, purpose in life is to reproduce, stay alive, sharpen your innate senses. You solve the problems of existence at the first level. You develop better tools to kill the beast or, or harvest the land or, or plant better crops. And you automatically create the problems of existence in the tribal order. You suddenly feel the urge that you need the safety of a tribe in order for you to sustain life after you solve your problem of existence in the first level. The tribal order is that of family bonds and kinship. Your primary goal is to seek safety and harmony in a daunting world. These things are alive today. There are many small businesses that operate on tribal values. They tend to close themselves out from the rest of the world, and that's why you see so many small businesses that don't succeed. They're, they're, they're very protective of their tribal culture without being aware of other dynamics going on around them. Dominate and control others. Okay? And then as you pillage the entire world, everybody lays bloody and tired, and you, become face to, you, you come face to face with your own mortality. And that is when you exit that stage. You go up to the fourth level system, the blue level of existence, and that is the absolute order. In culture, absolute order, the fourth level of values is extremely important as a foundational stone for nations. This is the shift from believing in the power of the egocentric, usually male, in the third level, to the power being vested in the institutions of the culture. Huge shift. Much of the emerging world is here between those two systems. We are lucky, us, Western Europe, Japan, some countries uh, are very lucky that our institutions have taken hold and that we don't default to civil war and killing each other. Okay? Much of the world is in, is in transition between those two value systems. Uh, it is the values of the one true way. It's the saintly existence. Postpone your gratification for reward later. It is essential. I talk uh, uh, about this in really in everyday life in real estate. Uh, I used to to build and sell homes, uh, and I used to broker homes. And uh, in order for you to buy a home before before the financial crisis, uh, you know, in the in the 1990s, you had to have the discipline to build a down payment. You had to have the discipline for you know to save up for two or three years. You had to have the discipline to have to be at one job for two years. Otherwise, you won't get a mortgage. Those are essential building blocks of a modern culture. Okay? Then as group thing becomes too dominant, too repressive, we exit a few men and women who are very intelligent, who have strategic thinking, say, heck with this. I cannot be forced to think like a group. They exit to the fifth level of values. This is the orange system of the enterprising, 
individualistic values. Uh, it's uh, by nature, it's strategic and competitive. It is very driven. The primary goal of the Orange system is to uncover the secrets of the universe through science, uh, research and development, and quantitative analysis. Um, uh, the healthy expression, we talked about healthy and unhealthy expressions. The healthy expression of that system is what you see around here, around La Jolla. Uh, all the, you know, the biotech firms, the, the you know, the, the genome project over at, um, uh, you know, uh, Vetner, is it correct? Vetner. 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 Uh, you know, all that research and development that goes around in the biomedical community. That is the healthy expression of the orange system. Green doesn't like orange because it, o because it only sees its unhealthy expression. Okay. Speaking of unhealthy expressions, it was the unhealthy expression of the orange system that almost brought the world to economic collapse in 2008. Okay? So the job of an integral designer is you work on making the system healthy for as long as possible. And, well, we'll get into that and, and why it hasn't happened in the last 30 years. So uh, as Wall Street collapses world order, few people get a <laughs> conscious awakening and they say, oh, heck, I don't want to be a broker on Wall Street. I want to go out and make organic cookies. That's not what you do. No. You assent to the green system. You help regulators in understanding what these thieves were doing. That's how you redeem yourself. You don't exit to the green system and live in the forest. Anyway, you exit to the green system where there are egalitarian values. Uh, the egalitarian va values uh, uh, are primarily uh, the human bond. Uh, that value system seeks... Uh, humanitarian and harmonious existence. It is a, a, a communitarian system. It's community-based. Uh, its organizational structure is the social network. Its primary drive is to love, to uh, make sure we all have equality and mutual growth. Okay? We reach that system and we stop growing. This is the last level in the first tier. And Green thinks that they are the smartest element in all of existence, and that's why you don't see change taking place. Orange has figured green out. You know, it throws it a bone every once in a while. And it's happy, but, you know, nothing changes. Right? Uh, Dr. Graves described the movement from six to seven as the momentous leap. We need a lot more energy in understanding what needs to be done in order for us to fully integrate into the integral values. Okay? Uh, we're getting ready for that. You know, we're, we're widening the bandwidth, if you will. All right, so as we exit the first year after uh, much heartache, we enter the seventh level system, which is the first level in the second tier, the integrate itself. Again, it is an individualistic value system, but this is where we begin to in integrate the individualistic with the communal. Uh, Dr. Beck usually refers to uh, uh, the, uh, the integral level as uh, left brain with intuition, and the eighth system level the opposite, intuition with data. Uh, the integral level has the big picture view, and we're quickly approaching that simply because of the possibility that we keep doing what we're doing and we're going to work ourselves off of this planet. Uh, uh, climate change is forcing our ascendance up to the seventh value system uh, uh, in ways like we've never seen it before. Uh, addressing climate change could only happen from the seventh level system. Uh, you have to be able to uh, get uh, China, which is transitioning from blue to orange, to agree to see that if they don't stop the ways they do their manufacturing, if they don't stop the, the, the rate of the growth that they're growing at, uh, that, uh, you know, we're not, we're, we're not going to be able to see a future. Uh, similarly, the, the Europeans are there. They're at the, at the green system. We're in orange. We're beginning to see that. Uh, if there's a legacy to be left for President Obama, it is uh, him uh, having those negotiation skills 
to really bring everybody to the table uh, who wasn't going to come to the table to sign the Paris Accord on uh, reducing the carbon footprint by uh, 2050. Uh, so we're quickly ascending to the integrated uh, level of values where we look at everything else below us and say, I can't believe we've been that stupid the last 500 years. Here's how we do solutions. Dr. Graves discovered in his research that people in the seventh level system make decisions twice as efficiently as the entire first year put together. And it uses less than half of the resources it does. Why? Because it has no ego attachment to any specific either money-making uh, uh, endeavor in, in, uh, in Orange or, or you know, uh, uh, being stuck to a position of hierarchy in, in, in blue or, you know, too attached, uh, too much of a tree hugger in green. It just cuts through that noise and says, this is what needs to be done. We're looking at the survival of the planet. Okay? There's a concept that Dr. Graves and, and Don supported for a while that says, as you enter every tier, the first level of every tier has to do with survival. Level one is the survival of the individual. Level seven is the survival of our planet. We have to put in place the mechanisms that are going to help us save our planet. And once the mechanisms are in place, we hand the whole thing over on a silver platter or a turquoise platter <laughs> to, the, to the eighth level system, uh, the system of global order uh, where, again, the, uh, the right brain meshes perfectly with the right brain, uh, with the, the right brain with the left brain. So it's holistic and intuitive. Um, it is uh, the meshing of mind and spirit. It deals with saving our global commons. It is interconnected, interdependent. Its primary goal is the thrivability of all the ecosystems on a planet with finite resources. That is becoming more and more clear that uh, this is the only planet that we have. And so what do we do for global management? So as the seventh level system begins to align the behaviors of the first tier, uh, the eighth level system is sort of like the final state where, uh, you know, it, it, becomes, it begins to, to, to uh, regenerate uh, what uh, the damage that we have caused to our planet over the last five or six hundred years. And this is a brief introduction to 40 years worth of research.